All right, so this is Past Cuisine A14. Egan talking about uh, the changes that I have made into A15. I've already made A15. Um, we only did one playtest of A14, but that was enough to get some grip on what to do with it. It's weird, because, like, in the past, I've heard a lot that the map was too small. Well, not a lot, but, you know, from people that I respected enough, you know, so they would say, oh, the map is too small, and I go, no, it's not, like, like, look at this gameplay space, like, it, all the gameplay spaces feel like they're adequately well designed to have, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of players on each team in each combat space, but that was the point of designing it that way, you know, also, I just gotta say, Owly Oop is playing TF2 again, oh my god, I don't know if that's, like, a thing, but that, that that's news in my book, because Owly Oop is, like, the coolest guy. I'm saying that for the world to hear. And, uh, anyway, so, where was I going? Where, what was I saying? I was saying that, yeah, people were saying that it was too small, but the gameplay spaces feel good, but it's weird because I think I know what they mean when they say it's too small, that the map itself is too small, but the gameplay spaces scaled uh, the scale it feels good you know what i mean um and so it was it, it was it was like in retrospect it's easy to say oh yeah like when they say it's too small obviously they're talking about the entire map and not the gameplay spaces but that's in retrospect you know hindsight is 2020 at the time i was really not thinking about that there could be a different meaning to it i thought literally they meant that like i don't know what when they said that that maybe that was the first thing that came to mind you know what i mean or maybe I had it in my mind, but I didn't really think it was a big problem. You know, because even, like, right here in A14, um, what I'm looking at right now is the entire width of this area, you know? And you could be saying, oh, well, that's a really bad thing that a sniper here can see the entire width of the map. But I thought, because it's past time, that's a, that could be, I don't know, maybe it could be at the time. I was still thinking, I still think maybe it's a good thing that you can see the entire width of the map. Because then you're constantly pushing with your team along the entire width of the map or along the length of the map, you know, so you can pass the ball back and forth, and you can always see where the ball is relatively easily, you know, and I thought that'd be cool. Um, the problem with that we realize now, especially where, I, well, I at least realize, maybe other people realize and they just didn't tell me, because, or maybe they did tell me, but they didn't write it in the feedback, or they didn't tell me explicitly. Anyway, we've realized now that, I've realized now that, if your map has these areas, there's probably a really good sentry gun spot for a level 3 or two level 3s that completely lock down this part of the map. And yes, it's good for combat because, you know, people are all conglomerated or congregated into one area, but, and that feels good combat wise, but it's frustrating because at least in past time it's not like like let's compare past time past cuisine to tc i could have made this map tc with just having a capture point on either side the difference between pass and uh, tc is tc all you need to do is slip past the opponent somehow you know like go through the sewers or something and then get onto the point and then you start capping the point and then everyone freaks out and they all try to dart back to the point as fast as they can but with past time you can get past to the other side and you can be here but you also need to have the ball with you and the ball is probably with the most amount of those teammates you know so uh i don't know if we'll see it here it's kind of looking like we're getting to the point where the two level three centuries were put up but uh there was a point where red was trying to push into blue team and they had the ball in the choke point and there were two level three sentries pointing at the choke point and so red was having a hard time pushing in for whatever reason i don't i have no idea why they're having a hard time pushing in but they're having a hard time pushing in and then sorry my dog growled and it distracted me long enough to bewilder me um they're having a hard time pushing in and then likewise even if blue team could sneak out through the sewers or sneak out through the tall place, you would still need to go back for the ball anyway. So even if you could slip past to go capture the point, you like 
uh, you catch what I'm saying now, I'm sure, right? I don't need to explain it, but like you'd still need to go back for the ball in order to go capture the point. So that's what I mean. So even though this was like a cool idea that the entire width of the map was in view all the time, it just turned out to be not good for gameplay because you couldn't bypass the sentry gun. So I had an idea for an A15, you know, we're still looking at A14 demo. I had an idea for an A15 where how about there's a route that goes through here out the back, you know, I'd be flying through it now, and goes up to here and out here. So a new route. Um, number one, that would make the map feel bigger because people are saying the map feels small. Number two, it would be a place for blue team to completely bypass those sentry guns and then be up at a place to take them out. Either here, or if you're like a soldier, just rocket jump over this side and then take it out from here, which I maybe you can outrange it, or if not, maybe you can outrange it from here. Is this the second engineer coming through? Hey, look, he is the new route. It might be the second engineer. Just waiting for him to put up the sentry gun. Owly Oop himself puts up the second sentry gun. Oh, it's a mini. Okay, he gets a pass. But yeah, there's two level threes at one point. I'm looking for the devious scoundrels who did that. How many? S they have two engineers. Anyway, anyway, or or was that the only two? Was? Oh yeah, we only had one round. Oh, well, how long have I been talking? Six minutes. The demo's gonna end. Okay, well, anyway, let's go take a look at the next thingy. Uh, A1501. All right, so this is the second thing, the A15. So what did I change? What did I change? Uh, new route, right? Oh, crap, what happened? Okay, there we go. So this is the new route. It comes out of the side of here. It's got a cool light that's different. So you're like, ooh, different light, you know? And then you come up through here, and then it exits out of the top of here. Oh, I've also colored the roofs so you can see from your base, red base, you go, oh, blue roof. That must lead to blue base. And look, it does lead to blue base through here. And also, so it's kind of a multi, oh, I would I would say, I would sound smart if I said, oh, it's a multi-dimensional use and like push up my glasses with my finger, you know. Um, it's got a lot of uses. So number one, of course, you can get past the sentry guns and I've made it, I don't know if we can do show triggers toggle in a demo. No, you can't. Anyway, I've completely no built the roofs this time um, because regularly no build was just on here and here and then here and here, but now this top part, because I say, well, it's also got the roof texture, it's also no build, because otherwise, yes, you could have stood here and still witnessed like the entire width of the map, but now you can't with a sentry gun. Anyway, so yes, there is now a separate way to get into the base or out of the base, alternatively, and it's kind of a good thing, because what if you're having a really hard time attacking, let's say red base, blue team is having a really hard time attacking red base, well now, there's a big sight line that comes and cuts off whoever is defending from over here. Now, the best sentry gun we found was actually right on this place because it can't really be outranged. You actually have to be within the area, or like maybe even Demo Man can take it down, but you'd have to be in the capture point zone area to do that. So, right here is still the best sentry gun location, but like to be outranged from a distance. And it's the longest route, you know, that would be kind of a good thing. Also, this route does not have any health or ammo pickups at all through it. So while it gives you the height advantage, um, it takes the longest and has no health pickups in it. And that was kind of the thing, because I asked during the last test on A14, you know, people say the map is small or but I think it's just that the scales of the, the, the areas of the, the gameplay areas of the map feel good, well scaled, but the overall map feels small. And so Chin suggested maybe you can make it an S. And I didn't really know what that meant. And I thought about completely redesigning the map for an hour or so. I was thinking about completely redesigning the map as an S. But then I realized that this idea basically makes it an S because Chin suggested like he warned me Egan, like if you put this route up here it might put a heavy focus on this upper route 
Oh, and I've added this new barricade wall here so that you can't actually see that door from out in the choke area. That door. He said, well, Chin said, well, you know, if you add this other route over here, this this upper area would become the most, the best route, you know? Um, everyone's going to want to defend up here. It's got the medium health and ammo as opposed to just a small health and ammo down at the choke. And now you have a new other route to take optionally. Um... And I thought about that, and I'm like, yeah, you know what, you're right, that's probably not a good thing. But then I thought about it a little bit more, and I'm like, oh, wait, no, it's a good thing, because if it's an S, then that would be good. Because, like, yes, the power route goes up through here, but the quick route goes now through the tight choke points, which is a good thing, I think. I mean, I don't actually know. I haven't really thought critically enough about it, but, I mean, it sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? So that's new route. And it does make the map bigger. That was like a, another big like problem was that it just, I mean, I've already gone over it, but like, I think we had another round at least on this map, but you can see it's only four of you four. So it's, it wasn't really an official test. We'll do another big test. I think it'll be good. I mean, I said that last time and the last time before that and the time before that, I mean, it feels good. So maybe it'll be good, right? Anyway, I also added this sign for red team and blue team on the other on the, on the blue side on here Just so when you come out of this back route you go, okay, where am I? I'm for sure I'm at red base, you know, and also put these things in the corners that have angles on them So you can bounce balls off of them And I put a little jumpy thing which you can jump on top of just so you can hide it just provides interesting gameplay experience, you know because we keep playing Capture Point Osiris, A17 at this point in time, and uh, I always think about how interesting the gameplay experiences are there. So I didn't want to do just a regular route. I wanted to put a little bit of spice in it, you know, something where you could jump up on top of or hide in. And of course, it's very, like, it's not just like a flat route, like it goes down and up and down again. So that's something to keep in mind if you're designing routes in your map. So I don't know, I mean, it feels good in a low amount of players, but now it should feel a little bit better with a, low, a higher amount of players. Okay, how long is this recording? 12 minutes. This might be one of the longest recordings we've ever done, because there's another big thing that I want to talk about quickly, I guess, was that teams seem to... Remember how I said that the, end, the, the one zone was being held down by sentry guns, uh, and it was really hard to push out? I feel like, wouldn't it be cool, and I've already changed it, wouldn't it be cool if when you have more goals than the other team, you get nerfed? Wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be interesting, I say? And I thought, how did I do it? So you know how when you have the ball and you push, let's say, into blue base, you go down in spawn times and they go up in spawn times. So at the moment in uh, A15, it is, I've changed it again. It's actually seven, okay, so it's nine V9 neutrally. Um, and then if attacking, it's seven for you, 11 for defenders. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't even know if that would appear. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so it's seven for you guys, 11 for defenders. Um, but now that only happens if you are equal goals scored or lower goals scored. Uh, so let's say blue has a score, a goal scored. Blue has a, go a goal scored and they try pushing into red base. They don't get the buff where red team gets higher respawns and blue team gets lower respawns. They don't get that. They're still at 9v9 neutral. So if a team starts start if a team starts dominating in the goals scored, they don't get the spawn buffs when they attack the enemy. And that's kind of like a, you know, experimental like maybe it won't work and maybe I'm overdoing it thing and maybe I should have tested what it was like with just the route more before I even attempted this thing, but it's one of those things that, you know, a lot of game developers say, well, you know, if we did our jobs right, you shouldn't notice it at all. But now that I've told you, <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's kind of the same thing, right? Like, no one's really going to notice the respawn times that much. Um, and I think I've hit a critical mass, by the way, where people were saying that 24 second respawns, that equals too long. 
um, and then we try 21 second respawns and no one complained but it but it still felt too short so that's why I've done uh, 9v9 and then uh, 7 and 11 so it goes up from 11 to 22 so it's a little bit longer than 21 so defense is a little bit weakened when both teams score goals are even you know because again like it was hard to push in so not now hard to push in it's not only that they get the external route to go and take down more of the defending team but also the defending team is nerfed one second but now I guess actually two seconds because it, it doubles you know 11 goes up to 22 instead of 10 goes up to 20 um, so they get an extra no it was 10.5 right and now it's 11 so they have one second respawn <laughs> Like how how is that really gonna affect? But anyway, they get they get an extra second of respawn when the ball is in their zone and the scores are even, uh, and also there's like the external route. Um, let's uh, pretend Corvatil didn't just say that in case any uh, pastime developers are watching. Um, yeah, so and, and the rooftops look good and. That's really all I'm going to say, I guess, because I've really said everything about the map. And it looks really good. What else did I do? Dominating respawn times. The map feels bigger. New routes. Yeah. So that's it. That's uh, A15. There's a lot to say. For some reason, it got really hot in this room in the last 15 minutes, and I'm sweating. Maybe it's because I'm talking. I'm actually doing something instead of just sitting still all day. Um... But yeah, I, I'll, I'll try to see if I can get a, uh, a play test with a lot of players. Because, like, I I mean, I keep saying, you know, hey, look at that. Look at that cool move that I just did. You throw the ball up, and then you rocket jump after. I didn't end up scoring here, but... And then, look, I, I throw it at the enemy to see if I can... Uh, but I died anyway. You know, look at those pro moves right there. Throw it up, and then rocket jump after it throw it at the enemy so he gets distracted but then he starts running away and you chase after him because now you you have the gun and he doesn't if you're low on health pro moves you know yeah maps looking better i might start detailing soon i mean again like I, 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 like what if it doesn't play well with a lot of players but you know what i mean you guys know what i mean don't you <laughs> where, where i say like Oh, it'll play well after this version, and then like people complain endlessly that the map is still too small or the spawn times. Oh, the spawn times are too long. But anyway, <laughs> you guys know what I mean, don't you? I say, oh, I'll, I'll detail the next version, and then it's like eight more versions before I detail. Yeah, uh, yeah. So thanks for watching. That's that's how I'm gonna wrap up this episode. So thanks, thanks for watching. See you guys. Uh, thanks for playing, if you were playing any of the playtest versions. By the way, thanks for the feedback, too. Thanks.